In a previous video, I showed you the effects of cargo liquefaction and how it can negatively affect the stability of ships and in extreme cases, even sink them. A lot of viewers made a certain comment which I actually found very interesting and at first glance, it should make sense. Basically, it says something like, the solution is very simple. Just put baffles or divisions in the cargo holds. That would prevent the liquefied cargo from shifting. Hmm. Now, why didn't those naval architects think of that in the first place? Okay, first of all, yes, adding baffles or segregation inside the cargo holds to compartmentalize the storage will definitely reduce the free surface effect and prevent the liquefied cargo from shifting. Take for example the cargo tank designs on tanker ships. Tankers are designed to carry liquids in bulk, so free surface effect is one of the first things that the design had to overcome. As we can see, the cargo tanks are divided longitudinally, so there are port side and starboard side tanks. This longitudinal bulkhead serves as a wall, which prevents the liquid cargo from flowing from one side of the ship to the other when the ship is rolling. Now, this appears to be the simplest solution to eliminate the danger of carrying cargoes that are prone to liquefaction, right? Well, yes. That being said, why aren't bulk carriers being designed like this? That's because cargoes that are prone to liquefaction are not the only things that bulk carriers transport. As mentioned earlier, tankers, they are designed to carry liquids. It doesn't matter what type it is or what viscosity it has, bottom line is that the cargo's physical state will always be liquid. So dealing with free surface effect will always be incorporated in a tanker ship's design. Bulk carrier ships, on the other hand, are designed to transport different types of solid cargoes in bulk. These solid cargoes have different physical properties. They can transport different types of grain like wheat, corn, barley, or mineral ores like iron ore, nickel, bauxite, or even sand, salt, coal. They could also transport processed items like steel bars, steel coils, or sometimes even scrap metal. There's a wide variety of cargo types that bulk carriers can transport. As long as it is solid and as long as the shippers can fit as much of it as possible inside the cargo hold or as much as the draft restriction allows. Now there are some types of solid cargo which are prone to liquefaction if they exceed the allowable moisture content such as bauxite, iron ore, and nickel ore. If that happens, the physical state of the cargo changes into a semi-liquid. And as we all know by now, bulk carriers are not designed to handle liquid or liquefied cargo. Now, putting baffles or divisions will surely make it safer for ships to transport cargoes that are prone to liquefaction. However, as mentioned earlier, bulk carriers are not specialized ships, so they don't exclusively carry these types of cargo. Having baffles may severely limit the ship's capacity to load other types of cargo or make it difficult to load or unload. As we have seen from my previous videos, different ports have different equipment for cargo loading or unloading. Some use cranes, some use vacuum, some use conveyors. But the common requirement for these equipment is that there should be adequate space to be able to effectively operate, especially when unloading the cargo. Now, if a ship has that kind of space limitation, it might not be able to compete in the market and will have limited opportunities for business. But there's another argument to be made for that, as I've seen in the comments. Some of the viewers said that the baffles should be removable. You know, just put them on or off as needed, or even weld them. As we can see, the cargo holds are enormous, so a baffle that can divide that entire space will be a huge metal plate that has bracings attached to it to prevent buckling or warping. 
Putting it in place as needed and then removing it will not be a simple task, whether it's a whole solid wall or even if it's divided into smaller parts that can be assembled. It can be done, sure, but not within a realistic time frame. Not to mention, where is it going to be stored if it won't be needed? It's not as if you can just leave a few thousand tons of steel in port. The ship will have to keep it on board, and that enormous weight will just add to the ship's tonnage, which could otherwise be allotted to carry more cargo. By the way, this discussion is all hypothetical, and I only made this video as a response to the numerous comments about putting baffles to reduce free surface effect. Like I said in my earlier videos, if I find a comment or question interesting, I'll make a video about it. And since a lot of people seem to have the same idea, well, that's interesting enough for me. Anyway, back to topic. If compartmentalizing the cargo holds is an option, it would be better to have the baffles fixed rather than removable. However, as mentioned earlier, there will be space limitations, which could result in slower cargo operations or the ship might not even meet the port requirements for it to get hired, which means longer port stays or lost business opportunities. And because there are a lot of different cargo prospects, most ships won't be transporting liquefying cargo on a regular basis anyway. And even if they did, the cargo will only liquefy if the moisture content is high, and there are control measures in place which will allow the ship to refuse the cargo if there is any reasonable doubt that the moisture content is above the specified limit. So for ship owners, investing on this type of ship design, bulk carriers with baffles, wouldn't make much sense from a business perspective. In the end, again, it's all about business. Ships are designed to perform as efficiently and as economically as possible. It might sound cold or heartless, but honestly, there's nothing wrong with that. At the end of the day, we're all here to earn a living. The ship owners, the charterers, the crew. Sure, there's a lot of danger, there's a lot of risk, but that's why there are also systems in place to assess and mitigate these risks. And as long as these systems are properly implemented, there is a very high probability that the risks won't blow up and cause any incidents.